Good evening, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of His Excellency Mr. Ashok Sajanhar, Ambassador of India to Sweden and Latvia, and Mrs. Madhu Sajanhar, I would like to extend a warm welcome to the India House. And to begin with, Mr. Gaurav Sajanhar, a son of uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Ashok Sajanhar, who has specially flown here from Delhi, will perform a few songs. Wow. So I would like to invite you to put your hands together to welcome Mr. Gaurav Sajanhar. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think I've ever played in front of such a distinguished audience, but I'll do my best. So it was difficult to figure out what songs to pick for, for such an occasion. So I tried to go with a couple of English songs, one Hindi song and one Swedish song. So let's see how it goes. The first one is uh, hopefully uh, universally known. It's uh, a medley of two Elvis Presley songs. <laughs> Well, it's a one for the money, two for the show, three to get her in and out, don't get going, don't you, step on my blue suede shoes, well, you can do anything, but lay off of my blue suede shoes, well, you can knock me down, step in my face, stand in my name all over the place, do anything you want. began to swing. You should have heard those knocked out jailbirds sing. Let's rock. Everybody, let's rock. Everybody in the North Cell Rock. Let's dance to the jail rock. Spider-Man for play the tennis saxophone. And little John was lolling on his live trombone. The drummer boy from Illinois and crash, boom, bang. The whole rhythm section was a purple game. Let's rock. Set to number three. You're the cutest jailbird I ever did see. I sure will be delighted with your company. Come on and do the jailhouse rock with me. Let's rock, everybody. Let's rock, everybody in the old cell block. When we're rocking all around the clock, in Stockholm we're not gonna waste a drop. When we're dancing to the jail. This next song, this next song is uh, is a Hindi song, uh, uh, made famous by by Amitabh Bachchan in the movie I think uh, Sharabi. It's called uh, Intiha. Mere yaar ki 
And now a little in English for those whose Swedish is just as good as mine. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, Swedish Parliament, Mr. Per Westerberg, Honorable Minister Ulf Christensen, Second Deputy Speaker, Mr. Ulf Hall, Leader of the Ruling Moderate Party, Ms. Anna Batra. Members of the Swedish Parliament, members of the visiting delegation from the Indian Parliament. I hope they're all here. <laughs> welcome, welcome to you. They are here, seven of them from all major national parties, including Indian National Congress, Bhatia Janta Party, Trinamool Congress, and others. Members of the Royal Court, Supreme Commander, General Swerkar Joransson, Miss Margaret Bjork. Mayor of the Stockholm City Council, my ambassador friends, members of the Indian community, distinguished guests, friends, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let me say what a great pleasure it is for both Madhu and me to welcome all of you here this evening. I have much to say, much to share with you because uh, we leave in a little less than two months from now and we've been here for a little less than two years. But not only for that, but also because uh, I retired from the Indian government, uh, Indian diplomatic service. We retired at the age of 60 years, which I reach uh, next month. So I have a great deal of uh, experiences that we have gone through. But I think all that I have to say, I can say it in two short words. And that is, thank you. <laughs> So I would like to emphasize that in big, bold capital letters, a huge thank you to each and every one. I think we have uh, a great deal to be thankful for and a great deal to, be, uh, to appreciate, as I guess all of us here have. We have indeed been uh, very lucky, very fortunate, and very blessed to have been through the 34 years that we have spent in the Indian diplomatic service, to have been in places which have been most interesting and most exciting. We were, for instance, uh, in Iran in the early 80s when we had uh, the aircrafts of Saddam Hussein coming, pounding the cities and bombs falling on both sides of our house. <laughs> but there were, of course, uh, very many more interesting and pleasant experiences. We were in, uh, again in uh, Moscow, the capital of the Soviet Union then in the early 80s when we saw the last few years of uh, President Brezhnev and the rise of uh, Solidarnosc and Lech Valenza in Poland. We were also again in Moscow in the late 90s when we saw the 
uh, fading away of President Yeltsin and the rise of, uh, at that time, Prime Minister Putin. We were in Washington, D.C. when we had the game-changing uh, uh, India-U.S. nuclear deal that was signed between Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and President George Bush. We were in uh, Brussels when uh, we launched the strategic partnership between India and the EU, and we launched the for, uh, free trade agreement negotiations between India and EU. And I'm very happy to inform you, Mr. Speaker and Mr. Matt Hellstrom, I know you have been Minister of Agriculture and Trade, etc., that the India-EU FTA should be signed hopefully on the 26th of June. So in another 13 uh, days, so to say. So we've been working towards that. Uh, I was in uh, Geneva when we negotiated for the Uruguay round. And even though I had moved out, I was told by my government to go back and negotiate for India. So these have been phenomenal experiences. It's been a great journey. It's been a momentous journey. It's been a memorable journey all through. It's been a stimulating and an inspiring, inspiring voyage all these 34 years. And uh, of course, uh, for that, uh, we are uh, uh, extremely uh, grateful. We have seen in this 34 years also, I've seen it in front of my eyes, India was at one time regarded as a land of famines and disasters. Today, it is looked upon as a land which holds promise and potential for uh, peace, security, prosperity and development, not only for its own people, but for the world in general. Uh, I would like to say a few words about our stay in uh, uh, Sweden, which has been truly remarkable. We have, uh, we of course go from here with a heavy heart, with uh, much sadness, but uh, also we go from here with uh, a feeling of great satisfaction and contentment, because uh, both for personal reasons and for official reasons. Officially, I think we take uh, pleasure and uh, pride that our relations between India and Sweden are ready for a takeoff. The last two years that we have seen, whether it is in terms of high-level political visits, Mr. Speaker, you welcomed your counterpart from India. There were many other ministers who came here from this side also, whether it's Mr. Carl Bildt or Joran Heglund, so many ministers. So at the political level, at the economic and commercial level, we have had very intense activity. At cultural level, education, scientific, every sphere we have made very good progress and none of this would have been possible without the unstinted support that we have received from our friends and collaborators and partners in Sweden so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of uh, you each and every one who's present here Mr. Speaker you all the representatives ministries of foreign affairs enterprise energy environment etc we wouldn't have been able to come where we are if we had not uh, received this uh, total support. At a personal level, let me say that uh, we have been able to travel all over the country, whether it is uh, Kiruna, we saw the Ice Hotel in Yukas Yarwe, the Tree Hotel in Yokmok. I think many of our Swedish friends have also not visited the Tree Hotel, yeah. <laughs> but it's a great uh, pleasure in being there. We have uh, 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 been uh, uh, exposed and we have deeply appreciated the great uh, Swedish traditions and uh, some of them we are going to take back with us whether it is the concept of uh, Fika <laughs> or it is the concept of Jantelagen which uh, I know is uh, are so very strongly responsible for the innovative and creative personality and we have of course been exposed to the very unique and incomparable uh, cuisine like the so strong <laughs> uh, this is one thing which i think will be difficult for us to carry with us yeah. <laughs> but all the others i think we will take it as a part of our uh, experience here we have been uh, very lucky and very fortunate as i said notwithstanding the traditional uh, swedish uh, reserve to get a large number of friends. And we have the great pleasure and privilege of welcoming so many here today. And uh, we will, uh, of course, we leave our friends here, but we will carry with us their uh, warmth, their love, their affection. 
and of course it will be our uh, endeavor to stay in touch. So a very big thank you to each and every one. I would be failing in my duty if I were not to thank also my diplomatic colleagues, my friends from the diplomatic corps who have been given their time so, uh, so freely to discuss issues of uh, common interest and concern. I would also like to thank the members of the Indian community who are here and who have been such active and strong bridges of friendship and cooperation between, uh, between yes, we, we really start young <laughs> in the embassy. <laughs> so, uh, my Indian uh, uh, friends and colleagues, uh, lastly, I would like to convey my deep appreciation to my colleagues and my team from the embassy again who have been uh, so very active in all uh, our initiatives taking all our initiatives forward and uh, one of them is leaving uh, tomorrow Rajiv Edwards who is here and then of course my personal staff uh, Zivile who has been such a pillar of strength for both my wife and me and uh, as they say, uh, the best for the last, my family, <laughs> particularly my mother, mother. She has been a true partner in every sense of the word, not only in her capacity as the president of the Diplomatic Women's Club here this year, in which she was uh, remarkably successful. But uh, she has uh, been by my side wherever we have been, from Dhaka to Tehran, from uh, Geneva to Bangkok, from Moscow to Washington. So I truly appreciate it. And she is my most uh, severe critic. <laughs> she is my best friend. She is my most ardent and committed supporter. Thank you. I would also like to thank our children. Gaurav is here. He has come uh, just a few days ago. And our daughter, Anuradha, she is in Delhi. And uh, I thank them and we are proud of them. Not only because of their achievements in academics or in artistic pursuits as you have yourself witnessed today but more importantly because both of them are compassionate generous kind and loving human beings so thank you so once again a great pleasure to welcome each and every one of you and we are after a short while going to throw the uh, buffet open for some Indian dinner and Indian cuisine but it's such a great delight to see all of you all of our friends so welcome and welcome <laughs> And now I would like to invite uh, His Excellency Mr. Per Westerberg, the speaker of the Iqtar. Thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Ambassador, mm -hmm. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to express my gratitude to His Excellency Mr. Ashok Sayanar for inviting me to this farewell reception. It has been an honor to collaborate with you during two dedicated and successful years here in Sweden. I have especially the great pleasure of attending cultural events hosted by you here in Stockholm. However, yes, I can also understand why you chose to leave Sweden to return to India for retirement. Your um, diverse country offers a range of climates, and to be honest, Sweden sometimes feeds like it's stuck in an eternal state of a winter. <laughs> <laughs> there is uh, no doubt that our nations have their differences. 
India is a subcontinent, seven times the size of Sweden and 100 times the number in population. <laughs> India is associated with color, heat and spice, Sweden more with minimalism, modern light and perhaps meatballs. <laughs> But we also share a range of similarities. Ever since India, India's independence in 1947, relations between India and Sweden have been extensive. Already in 1948, one year later, diplomatic relations were established between our nations. And in 1953, India became one of the first recipients of Swedish development assistance. The first business investments in India were made more than a hundred years ago. And today more than 140 Swedish companies are represented in India. Contacts between Sweden and India have widened and deepened in the last few years especially in the field of politics and trade. Trade has intensified and bilateral cooperation, especially in such areas as the environment, research and science has increased. Tomorrow marks exactly one year since Speaker Meira Kumar led the delegation to Sweden. And I had the pleasure of meeting her here in Sweden. Speaker Koma especially highlighted some of the values of our nations share, democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. Sweden recently opened another honorary consulate in Mumbai. And when I visited India four years ago, I experienced a vibrant nation taking great strides forward. Despite the different challenges we face in the 21st century, I am convinced that our nations have much to learn from each other. And I look forward to further strengthening relations between India and Sweden. Thank you again, and to Your Excellency, I wish you the very best for your retirement. And allow me to add, with your young appearance, I have the heart to believe that it's time for you to retire <laughs> now. <laughs> and now I wish you all the best and there might be a new career as an agent, a manager for your son in his career. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Her Excellency Ms. Uh, Margareta Björk, the President of the Stockholm City Council. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. and uh, Mrs. Ambassador, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the city of Stockholm, um, I would say it had been too short time for you to be in Stockholm. Yes. Just two years, but you have during these two years done a lot of things. You have, I think more than Swedes, uh, discovered our beautiful country. But what you also have done is that the cooperation between you, uh, your staff, and the city of Stockholm has been the most uh, good one and we have achieved one thing which I think is very, very important for the future to come. We have together a global citizen program. We have in Stockholm about eight to ten uh, upper secondary schools where the pupils go to India and the Indian pupils come here to Stockholm and they live in Swedish families, they attend Swedish lessons 
and, and as, eat Swedish meatballs. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't sing school. <laughs> Maybe they have tried to do the small frogs. I hope so anyhow. But I have had the opportunity to meet those uh, Indian youngsters here in Stockholm and to listen to, to them and to hear what are their, what kind of experiences have they with them back to India. And also I listen to this, our uh, young people from Stockholm uh, going to India and they all said it's uh, an experience of that the global world is not that big as before. And I think that is very important. So now when you go back to India, I think you will be a new Swedish ambassador. <laughs> Not paid by the government. <laughs> but I know that you have a got of good memories from this country and we wish you from Stockholm good luck. And I don't think either that you will retire. <laughs> and I know I will see you in January. And I also would like to greet you with your beautiful wife because she had done a good work with the International Women's Club. So I hope your coming ambassador will continue the work you have done here because you have done a lot for our cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. And now I'd like to invite uh, Her Excellency Ms. Anna Schindberg-Batra from the Sweden's Parliament. Your Excellency, Mr. Speaker, um, guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, th thank you very much for this honor and opportunity. I should say that I agree with very much of what the speaker and uh, Ms. Margareta Bjork already have said, and I'll be brief because I know you're all waiting for the rest of this <laughs> very nice evening. Uh, but thank you very much, uh, dear Ashok, and let me also stress the importance of um, the cooperation between our countries. I think it has improved a lot over the last few years. I started to get to know India about 10 years ago, and it used to be described by, for example, your pre predecessor, Mrs. Uh, Deepa Kovaran uh, uh, with um, she told me that the, she got the impression that the Swedish perception of India 10 years ago was all about 3C. Cost, cows and chaos and I think that is changing a lot the yeah. more exchange we have the more people go the more of your work is done the better the understanding uh, between our countries and also in Sweden for the modern India that is now rising as you know according to the IMF 80% uh, of this year's growth in the world is expected to come from countries like India there may be reports of uh, slowering growth, uh, but we sh should still all envy India, I think, if you look at the economic development. You've done great work, I think, to uh, enhance the understanding of the modern India and to increase the exchange between our countries. I hope, of course, that this um, stays on and I'm looking forward to staying good friends with India and with you. Uh, I know, I happen to be informed, and this is a more personal note, as you know, I happen to know that you will be staying quite close to some butter relatives when you now retire, which makes me personally quite happy because that would, of course, uh, enable us to stay in touch. Uh, I also, as the speech, speaker already touched upon, and as was quite obvious uh, earlier this evening, I also would like to thank you for get, giving that extra personal touch to representing your country country here in Stockholm, especially culturally so. Uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, uh, see you entertain again and to get, give us the opportunity to hear your, your son again uh, performing so well. And um, uh, for, as a small, small token of uh, my personal appreciation and my families as well, uh, I brought this record of Swedish pop music. Now this is of course nothing like what we've heard this evening, <laughs> earlier here at the embassy, um, but it could perhaps symbolize uh, some of the work that's been done between our countries. This was a compilation done 
uh, at the moment of the Swedish presidency in the EU, where also Sweden and India work very well together, EU and India work very well together, and where culture was used to enhance the cooperation between the regions and countries. I hope to stay in touch, and I would like to extend this personal thanks for these years and wish our countries uh, success in the future building of our relationships. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Rightful recipient. Very well. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mrs. Margareta Björk, President of the Stockholm City Council. Thank you very much, uh, Anna. It's a great honor and a great privilege for us to have all our friends here. You have uh, come here, of course, for us, and we are deeply grateful for that. But I'm sure. As has been repeated, you've also come for India, which, like Sweden, is a factor of uh, peace and stability and prosperity in the world. So I would like to wish all of you all the very best, but before I sign off, I would also like to express the sincere hope that my successor will receive the same cooperation and the same support that I have been privileged to receive. My successor is a skilled, experienced, and a capable diplomat, and she's a very dear personal friend of both my wife. They go back to school together, <laughs> and uh, of mine, after joining the service and after marrying her. <laughs> so I hope she will also get the same support from all of you. Once again, welcome. And uh, please enjoy the evening. We have the food ready and drinks. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you.